going to talk about uh, Vagrant, a little bit about Chef, but not really, and uh, how this is being used in the Elms Learning Network to really jumpstart and standardize development practices. Uh, so this is partly a case study of how we are uh, using Vagrant in the Elms Learning Network project, as well as, I hope, just an interesting way of structuring a project in general. This is not really specific to Drupal per se, uh, but you might find it more interesting if you do Drupal development. So for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Vagrant uh, is, as it says here, create configurable, lightweight, reproducible, and portable development environments. Um, what this really is, is it's a packaging format of, of a bunch of commands to issue against a VM. Um, and so the idea is that your VM in production, or you know what you're running in production, is basically mirrored in your VM locally. And you can see it's a very simple command. You basically initialize something, and then you do vagrant up. So the case study, if you will, is going to be off of this project called Elms LN dash vagrant. Uh, Elms LN stands for Elms Learning Network. It is uh, a lot of what I do with my life. <laughs> so. What I needed was a standardized development environment um, to jumpstart development for other people getting involved with the project soon, as well as just to really standardize my own development practices. So you can see in here, um, this is built off of, if I have it down here, built off of previous uh, Drupal projects that were built using Vagrant. Uh, I hope that even if you're not doing Elms Learning Network development, you can learn from the files in here and modify them to your, your liking. Uh, so basic makeup of a Vagrant file is this. You've got the, an API definition. You've got the configuration of it. Let's make it a little bigger here. Um, just indicating, hey, this is API 2, in case you need to change it along down the road. If you do the Vagrant init command, it'll generate a lot of this file for you. Um, just showing some options in ours. So we all, I'm also going to show something that's brand new. It's maybe a week old. Um, in Vagrant 1.5, this notion of Vagrant Cloud, which allows for sharing uh, access to VMs remotely, which is very cool. Uh, it's really gonna help out with some development stuff in this project. So what you can do, traditionally you had to do an address like this. You'd say, well, this box is named Precise64, and then you, you download the Precise64.box VM. Uh, this VM is built on Ubuntu, for example. Um, this, if you're using Vagrant Cloud, is how you can define things going forward. So there's actually a kind of, this is the GitHub of VMs, if you will. Uh, so I have my VM up here, uh, which is a prepackaged, uh, performance optimized, you know, basically a VM positioned to run Elms Learning Network. Um, so I ran through a Vagrant file, you know, script process um, to see what that looks like. I'm inside this folder, but in the command line, you'll see if we run just Vagrant, you get these different command options. Uh, so what I did to produce my box is there's a package. So what you could do is you could do, I won't run it, but you could do vagrant up. And then after vagrant up, uh, once it's finished, you can do vagrant package and it'll turn into a dot box file. Uh, so we'll do vagrant up, that takes some time and I'll just let that run in the background. Um, vagrant up basically runs through the commands that are issued in this file. So the first one is gonna be turn on the VM and then after that, it's going to start to apply commands to it. So we'll see in my use case, I actually uh, activate five IP addresses, six IP addresses if I could count. I forward the MySQL ports and the um, port 80 for the web server. And you can do things like this, like say, okay, well, the provider is VirtualBox. That's the, the name that this um, VM is built in. Um, I want you to give the VM a gig of RAM and uh, access to two CPUs. So it'll it'll try and simulate that. Um, then what I use is Chef, and I, I made a little doodle, I call them doodlecast, uh, video that I'll link to in the um, in this blog post uh, about how that how the two play together. Um, Chef is essentially a, a series of recipes, a series of recipes, if you will, for doing a micro change management. Uh, to a, co a configuration of a server of some kind. Uh, so basically I go in and I say, hey, add this role, Elms Learning Network subbox. Um, there's a folder that's synced between the VM and production, you know, so you can share files between your server. I honestly haven't found that that useful, um, but I'm not, you know, I just leave it in there to leave it in there. 
Um, and then the last thing I do is, you know, if you don't feel like using Chef, you can actually just use um, things like Shell. And so in this case, I just do an inline command that basically just prints this to the screen, hey, you're good to go. So if we go back to our VM command, you'll see it's starting to run through my Chef scripts. It's activating these ports, it's forwarding things, and it's basically just setting up a new development environment for me to use. Um, in Elm's Learning Network, and I don't even, this might be picking up the fans, the computer is really heating up, if you will, uh, because it's running a command that basically goes and installs Elm's Learning Network, uh, which is a series of Drupal distributions. So to see what the chef files look like, I mentioned to use a role. So there's a roles folder, um, and I used, I forked a, uh, a Drupal uh, vagrant project to build this in the first place. So you'll see some of those left over. There's things like Drupal underscore dev. So hopefully this can be useful to people that aren't, you know, aren't even using uh, Elm's VM or Elm's Vagrant kind of a thing. Um, so you can see that basically you reference recipes and then recipes are a specific recipe in there to run. So you see there's, you know, in the Drupal cookbook, uh, go and run the dev procedures. Uh, so mine is called Elm Subbox. And you'll see we run through, we call these other recipes to fire. Uh, something else you can do, you can, uh, call other roles. So in the case of Basebox, this was the procedure used to build the VM that I then packaged and put up in Vagrant Cloud. And so you can see use these roles, which basically is saying call these other files to run. So, you know, bundles of, of functionality and recipes that you can have. Um, if you're not familiar with Chef, I highly recommend looking into it. Uh, so just to a sample of what one of these cookbooks looks like. So here's the Elms Learning Network cookbook. I actually have these stored at another project space too. Um, so you can use them even without this system. But to look inside here, you'll see there's, uh, here's the install one. So this is a, a Ruby script that's just running bash and it's running this bash command that sets everything up. Uh, it allows you to do things like only if, so you can say, you know, if this file exists, do it. And not if, so this would be, you know, I know at the end of the job this file gets produced, so don't bother running it again if you see it. Uh, you can do things like that with it. Command is still going in the background there. You can look in the specific ones for, for the Vagrant config. We've got uh, in the files directory, I actually have some SQL in here. And so you can see there's the pwik install that runs through. We can do things like create directories, uh, modify the permissions of those directories automatically, uh, recursively apply the permissions, things like that, whether or not to create it if it doesn't exist. You can create a database using something like this. So this is a, a bash script that's calling MySQL admin and you know importing, or while well, this is creating a database, uh, this next one is actually running uh, a SQL file and processes it. So that's part of what takes long in the initial box creation process. So you see we are into uh, last minute configuration tweaks now. So we've almost got our VM done. Um, it keeps a nice little counter along the side. You can see how long this takes from when it initially issues these uh, statements. And you can see that to set up uh, right here, this Elms Learning Network thing. So that started running here, this previous script finished. So it took four minutes just to run that one script. Um, once you're done, you can do Vagrant SSH, if I can type. And we're effectively SSHing into the VM. So it's, you know, it's set up, it's tuned to run Elms Learning Network. That's all well and good, but not the focus of this presentation. And so you'll see the last line I had in the Vagrant file was, Go to this address and then you can log in. So just to show that that does something, we can jump to this online.elmsln.local file. Um, the way that you utilize files like this in the first place is I have to log out of the VM. You can, if you have the correct permissions, modify your Etsy host file, if I could spell again, hosts. <laughs> and you'll see that in here I've added these basically made up IP addresses and mapped them to made up web addresses. So I've got a Drupal site that's running on here. It's inside a virtual environment. Cool. I can do all the testing I want. I can use Git now. I can keep this in sync with production. 
Um, and I can do a lot of testing before pushing to production is the, the major thing. Um, something else you can do now with 1.5 of Vagrant is I can go and I can do Vagrant, um, we'll do Vagrant login. And it's going to prompt us for our username or email. So mine is BTO Pro. Password, it will be hidden, thank goodness. So first we log in um, to enable functionality of 1.5. And you'll see, hey, you're logged in now. And then what I can do is, let's say that I want to give this to someone else to use or check out. We can do vagrant share, and then I believe it's um, dash SSH. Well, dash dash SSH, there we go. And so you see there's some additional options here I could have done with Vagrant Share, um, whether or not to have no password, you know, I don't know that you would really want to do that, um, whether to disable HTTP so you could have a server that people can just SSH into that has no broadcasting location. And we'll see what this does here. So this starts to turn on one portion of VM at the local uh, machine address, just the first one. And so we're going to set a password going to be the word cool because we're doing something cool here so it's going to run through and now this this process is just running but you'll see it's given this uh, your vagrant share is running and here's the name of it so I can actually copy this address now and we'll paste it in and you'll see something that says forbidden um, this is mapping to a part of my VM um, off of the first address so if we go into Elms LN Vagrant and the Vagrant file, we can see that the first address is this 10.0.0.10, which in our host we're mapping to courses.elmsln.local. Now this part starts to get a little, you know, this is a more complex setup than most people use for development, but I know that that points to domains and then courses. So if this is actually broadcasting, I should be able to go to any of these web pages. And so if we go to here and do README, you can see we pull up. This is where sim links for this tool will be added. So this is actually mapping to the VM uh, from a publicly accessible location. To see what this looks like in Vagrant Cloud, if I click on my shares, you'll see that it's created a record indicating that port 80 is forwarding to port 80 and that it has this name. Uh, it automatically sets these up to expire in an hour, and you can manually expire them if you want to. Now, I turned on the SSH option, um, which would allow someone to remotely SSH into this, you know, into this little VM instance uh, through the share capabilities. So let's see what that would look like. So I don't actually need to go to this directory, but just so I have something there. Um, the way that you initialize that would be Vagrant, and we'll see the commands. You'll see there's Vagrant Connect, which is connect to a remotely shared Vagrant environment. So we'll do Vagrant Connect. And then I believe that I need the name of this, so we'll copy this name. This They always have wonderful names. <laughs> so you can see Relaxed Deer, Revolting Chipmunk, Cold Guinea. Um, paste that in. Okay, it's going to run through, and eventually it's going to tell me that I need a password. Okay, there we go. Vagrant has successfully connected to the remote shared machine. You can either use the machine IP above to talk to it like any other computer, or you can configure blah, blah, blah. So I need to, I thought I needed to press enter to get to it. So this was just mapping it to my local. So I'm actually going to pull up another terminal window here. Uh, and instead of just adding the name, I want to add dash dash SSH, just allow me to actually SSH into this machine. There we go. That looks more like what I was looking for. Um, and so it says, hey, you need an SSH, can you do this? Enter, and my wonderfully secure private key at this point is cool. And this is now, I've effectively, you know, it's kind of silly in this instance, but I'm going out of my computer through Vagrant, through a tunnel in Vagrant Cloud, and then down into the VM that's you know running on a different part of my computer um, to show that this is actually the same system. You see we've got all that there. Uh, we can open up yet another terminal window, and we'll go into where it's running, and we'll do uh, 
vagrants SSH. So we are now connected in two different windows. One is through a local connection. Uh, and we'll touch a file called cool stuff, which places cool stuff in here, you'll see. And now we'll go over to this window, which is, as we saw, this is through the SSH method and list, and now we have cool stuff there. So this is actually SSHing into um, a temporary VM. Now at the end of this time, and I can refresh, it should, uh, it says it's going to automatically expire in an hour. I can manually expire this now, and now we're not sharing anymore. Um, the connection should be broken on some of these or should break it very soon. I uh, haven't actually done that part before, but we'll close that. Ah, there we go. Connection closed by remote host. It booted me out. So it knew that it, it killed and it, you know, knocked me out of the system. So I hope you can see why this would be useful uh, for developing really any application, let alone a Drupal-based application. Um, it is in beta still, so, you know, who knows how much this will cost once it goes goes full, but um, just from being able to share VMs there, uh, work off of the same, you know, dedicated instance uh, with a coworker, and then if they're having a problem or I'm having a problem, being able to give this temporary way of SSHing into each other's machines, I think provides for some very interesting uh, development opportunities. So I hope this was useful to those watching. Uh, if you have any questions about Elm's Learning Network or Vagrant or Chef in general, uh, please post in the comments or just ping me on Twitter.